Hello Facebook, praise the Lord, it's another Friday, it's 7 o'clock and this is the Good Fight Broadcast, amen. What a privilege, privilege it is to, uh, to be able to share the gospel one more time before the Lord returns. I hope you uh, will log on tonight and uh, just share uh, a little bit with me just uh, and, and believe what you hear tonight. If I could say anything to you tonight uh, to cause you to maybe rethink some things you might have learned in the past. Maybe you've been in religion for a long time. You know, maybe you've uh, considered yourself as a Christian for a long time. And, and, and right now, uh, you feel like giving up. Right now, you feel like throwing in the towel. You said, enough's enough. You know, I, I can't deal with this any much longer. I, listen, I come to you tonight to tell you, you just take one more look to the cross of Jesus Christ just one more time. There you'll find strength, amen, to continue on. No matter what the need, no matter what's going on in your life tonight, no matter what afflictions you may be suffering, no matter what, no matter what's going on in your life, Jesus Christ is the answer. What he did for you at Calvary destroyed every bit of the work that the enemy tried to, to pull against you. He destroyed that work and he brought forth power, amen, to watch, look, to, to, to stand. He gave you power to stand. He gave you power not, and to watch uh, for his returning, amen, but to also to be able to walk godly in this present life. That's what he done. He died to give you that. He did not die on the cross just to save you. He died on the cross to fulfill his calling in your life, which is to be more Christ-like. That's what the Bible tells us, that the Spirit is always handing us over, delivering us over to the death of Jesus, that the life of Christ might also manifest in our mortal body. Amen. That's the work that Christ died uh, that you could operate in. Amen. More Christ likeness. Amen. So tonight, amen. Thank God for another day. He saw it fit for another Friday to get on here to to just encourage you this afternoon to keep taking the cross up. But when I say take up the cross, you listen, you can't take up the cross without denying self. That's the problem that most of the world and the church and, and all those that call themselves Christians have a problem with, is denying self. Because self wants what, hmm, my goodness, Self wants what it's always wanted. Self wants its way. Self wants to fit in. Self wants to be seen. Self wants gratification. That's what self wants. That's what self desires to have. Is all the things that the world desires to have. All the teachings. All the, all the uh, rhetoric of the world. That's what the world does, amen? But we're not of the world. We are in Christ. The Bible tells us now we are with Christ in heavenly places. Let our minds be on those things that are above and not on anything else. Because whatever's going on in your life, it's not too big for God. It's not too big for Him. He dealt with it when He sent His Son to the cross that his son would be crucified, that we might be crucified with him. Therefore, we are heirs with Jesus Christ, joint heirs with him. Now we have all that we need in Christ if we'll just be found in him. And being found in him is to have right faith, faith that God recognizes, faith that only work God will work in. And that is exclusively in what Christ 
done at the cross. It worked for me. It can work for you. I don't care who you are. I don't care how deep in sin you might be right now. It does not matter. What matters is that your faith line up with what the Word of God preaches and teaches. That God can send grace into your heart and into your life and begin to manifest Himself in your mortal body. This is what God desires in every man and every woman in every child's life that is on this side of glory is that they take up the cross, deny self, take up the cross, and begin to let God go to work in their heart and their life. And let and and do not frustrate that grace. Do not move away from that grace, no matter what's going on. Amen. So while you're on here making comments, thank you for all the good comments and you're watching. Get your Bible, amen. Get your Bible and open up, praise God. Open up to the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Glad to see everybody tonight. Hope there's some more that would log on, but if they don't, it doesn't matter. What matters is who hearing right now and uh, who might hear in the future, praise God. That's what matters. Let's... uh. Praise God. Amen. So, I want to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 15. Amen. And the Bible says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not. Paul said, I cease not. To give thanks for you. Paul prayed for the saints. Paul would always lift up all the saints and pray for them. What would he pray? We're fixing to find out. Make mention of you in my prayers. This is what he's praying. And this is what I desire tonight. Every one of you that's watching. Every one of you that's logged on tonight. That's looking uh, that's uh, liking this, that's hearing this tonight, you need to hear exactly what Paul would pray for the saints. Amen. This is what he would pray. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Amen. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Now Paul would pray this to the saints, would pray this to the church in Ephesus. He would pray that the saints there would be, that the understanding be enlightened. That means that they would be made spiritually aware of what was going on, what they had in this Jesus of the Scriptures. Tonight, as you see this broadcast, today, as you see this broadcast, I don't know if there will ever be another broadcast. Don't know. All I have is tonight. Tonight, I tell you this, that you need to be spiritually aware of what you have in Jesus Christ and what He's done for you at the cross. No matter what you're going through, no matter the, the troubles, no matter the trials, no matter the aches, the pains, none of that. Listen, and them things can be real. They can be real. No matter the mind, what your mind wants to think on, get mind off self, get mind, get your mind off of all the things that are troubling you. Get, all, get your mind off all the things that are corrupting you. And begin to get your eyes upon this Jesus. Fix your eyes upon this Jesus 
that would go to Calvary, that would lay down his life. He was not a sinner, did not know sin. God was never found on his lips. He went to the cross, gave his life that you, that's right, sir, that you, even you may be a drunkard, you may be a doper, you may be a blasphemer, you may be a fornicator, you may be doing all these things. That doesn't matter. What matters is right now, right now, if you believe now, the Bible says that you can be made whole, that you can, that you can turn from all those things and embrace this Jesus of the Scriptures, the one that God sent, that was born of Mary, that would grow up to be 30 years old, that would go to the cross, that would do all the miracles that He done, that would preach the cross. He was preaching the cross as He was headed to the cross throughout all Scriptures. You'll see Him constantly telling the disciples, it's much needs that I go away. It's much needs that I go away. For if I go not away, He will not come. Who's He? It's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the one who delivers you over to the death of Jesus. That Jesus might be manifested in your mortal body. This is what the work of Christ done. That you might live godly in this present world. Not worldly, not worrying about what, you, what you're living in, what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're driving, what your clothes are. God said, don't worry about all that. He said, you need to trust in me. Deny self, deny all that, and trust in me. Don't you know that if I'll feed the birds of the air, how much more shall I feed my children? Amen? Don't worry about it. Worrying is not going to do you one bit of good, my friend. Worrying is not going to do you one bit of good. But faith will. Amen? Faith will do you tremendous amount of good. Amen? It will bring you into a place where, you, where peace is established. Where you don't have to be worried and being tossed to and fro with the things that are going on uh, in your life and around you. Amen? If you'll just focus on Christ and what He done at the cross. The Bible says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what the hope of His calling is. Amen. Spiritual awareness. Hallelujah. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Amen. The saints are his inheritance. Amen. We need to walk like we're saints. Amen. I'm not talking about Catholic saints that put the robes on and walk around. But then at, at, on Friday night they're in the bar getting drunk. I'm not talking about that type of... That's not a saint. Okay. Now the world will label that as a saint because he's got money and he's in a big church and he's very popular amongst his uh, other uh, sinners. Amen. Let's get it down to where the rubber meets the road. I know you're not going to like this tonight, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. Okay, I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to tell you the only place where you can find true uh, uh, power of God that makes you become a saint is through what Christ did at the cross and your faith therein and not be moved away from that because very soon this Jesus is about to come. He is about to return, amen, and He's about to take the church and the church is those who are continuing in the faith, the faith of the Son of God who loved them and gave his self for them. Amen. He gave Himself for you too. But you got to believe it, sir. You got to take it into your own heart. You got to be the one that says, Hey, I'm tired of living a life that I know's not, I know God's not pleased, but there, but I'm sure that God will 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 overlook some of the things that uh you know I, I'm doing. Let me tell you something. 
God forgives when you come to Calvary. Amen. Now, we got a church out there that's putting more emphasis on the potential to sin rather than the potential to be godly. Amen. This is what the cross done. The cross was given that you might live godly in this present life. Not a sinner. Amen. I know, listen to me. I know it's hard for you to understand that. It's hard for you to, to, to comprehend that Christ died that you might live a godly life in this present world. But He did. He gave His perfect life that you, my friend, can be crucified with Him and operate under the unction of the Holy Spirit constantly. This is what He done. If you'll stay in Him. Amen. If you'll stay in Him. Praise God. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 22, and the Bible says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. What do you mean if your eye shall be single? That means if your eye is, a, is looking exclusively to what Christ did for you at Calvary, at the cross, that the Spirit of God will come and do the work that He promised He'll do. The reason that God's not doing the work that He promised you He would do is because your eye is not single. It's because your faith is over here, it's over there. When this happens and that happens, you get all beside yourself. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow after me, continue in me. It's time, folks, that we get our eyes off of the things going on around us that may be even going on in us. If we're not looking to the cross, there will be things going on in us that's not godly. Jealousy, anger, not, these are fleshly things that don't need to be in the child of God. And I know that some of you done cut me off because my, maybe my demeanor might be a little too bold for you. Because I've heard some of you say, well, your, your, your boldness is, your rudeness is not boldness. Let me tell you something, sir and ma'am. I'm not being rude. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to get you a hold of this truth. I am trying my, I'm doing all that I can under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And I know He's dealing with you tonight. I know He's dealing with you because I'm putting forth the cross of Christ that you might be dealt with in the manner that you need to be dealt with. Every man, woman, and child that's born, even those that are righteous in Christ, need to be edified. They need to be admonished. Amen. That's what I'm... I'm not saying anything to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to get you to see right that you might begin to start walking upright. Verse 19 says this, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us were who believe? Now here, here, here it is again. To who believe? According to the powering of His mighty power. According to the working of His mighty power. According to the working of His mighty power. See, it's all Him. It's all Him. All we do is believe. And when we believe and the Spirit of God begins to deal with our hearts and we begin to yield to the things of God, these things begin to manifest themselves. And this is what we need in the last day. We don't need wishy-washy preachers. We don't need grace-polluting preachers and teachers. We don't need to put more emphasis on the potential to sin. We need to put more emphasis on the potential that Christ died to make us godly. Amen? This is what we need. We don't need ministers behind the pulpit 
preaching the potential of sinning. We need preachers behind the pulpit that would preach the message of the cross, that would preach it bold, they would not be afraid or fear of men, that they might get their credentials pulled, or that they might get thrown out of a lineup. Amen? It doesn't matter. Or am, am I here to please God, or am I here to please man? I'm here that you might know the truth. The true grace of God that will begin to go to work in you the moment you believe. Not putting you off in the, in the future, but the moment that you believe. The grace of God will begin to go to work in your heart and in your life. I get sick and tired of hearing these ministers talking about the potential to sin. Man, I was a sinner for 35 years. You hear me? 35 years. I ain't going back there. I have a new life, amen, in Christ Jesus. And I have the power from Jesus going to the cross to operate in my heart and my life on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, if I will keep my faith in what Christ done for me at the cross. Amen? If I will keep faith in that, oh, hallelujah, all the promises of God are fulfilled in what Christ done for us. Amen. Every bit of it was done for us. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? These all things that the Bible is speaking of in Romans 8 and 32, is all the things that are in the will of God. Those are the things that God's going to give to you. Though that's in the will of God. God's not trying to give you a new bass boat, my friend. God's not trying to give you a three... 3,500 square foot house with a pool in it. Listen, God's not, God's not, I ain't saying God can't do those things, but I'm telling you, my friend, God is a whole lot more concerned about you representing Him while you're here on this earth in a manner of humbleness rather than one that is greedy and self centered. Amen. Praise God. Apostle Paul didn't have nothing. All Apostle, all, pa, the Apostle Paul didn't own a house. I don't even know if he owned a camel. I don't know. But I know this. The Apostle Paul had peace with God. The Apostle Paul had wonder-working power working in his life and in his ministry because he stayed humble. Because he chose the glory in his infirmities. Because he chose to glory when he was weak that he might be made strong in Christ that the power of God might rest upon him. Amen. And this is where we can find the grace of God. In our weakness, going to Calvary, knowing that he done it all and that the power of God might rest upon you. So whatever you're going through tonight, sir, whatever it is, it, don't, it, it makes no difference to God. He wants you to lay those things down, amen, and to take up the cross and begin to believe Him for whatever the need is in your life, no matter what it is, no matter what burden, no matter what uh, whatever it might be. He come, amen, to deliver. He come to set free. He come to do all those things, but he done them by one way, and that was at the cross. He didn't do it any other way. There's no other way that you can receive anything from God but through the cross. Everything you need, Jesus provided it for you. Amen. Verse 20. For those that just logged on, listen, this is Ephesians chapter 1. We're in Ephesians chapter 1. We, we started with verse 15. I'm in verse 20 now. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He wrought it in God. That means he brought about these things in Jesus Christ. Now when I say in Jesus Christ, you need to know how to get in Jesus Christ. That's very important. Because you can know that they're in Jesus Christ and never enter in to the work. You need to know how to get in Christ. You get in Christ by denying self, taking up the cross. It's called repenting and turning to the Lord and giving Him your heart and your life and everything about you. Denying self, giving it over to Christ that you might be crucified with Him, that the power of God may meet every bit of your needs. Amen. This is what Christ died to do, y'all. This is what Christ died to do. He died to eliminate you. Amen. He had died to eliminate you that He might be manifested in your mortal body. I know you don't like that tonight. I know some of you have a hard time hearing that tonight. But He died to eliminate you, my friend. Why did He die to eliminate me? Because He knew within my heart was no good thing. And I say that to you tonight. That he knows that in your heart is no good thing. For what I have, it's if, if any of it's good, I received it from him. Amen. I received it through Jesus Christ and what he did for me at the cross. That is that good thing. Amen. There ain't anything else that's good. Now, I know you say, well, watermelon's good. I, then I, I'm talking spiritual things, my friend. Grow up. Quit thinking carnal. I'm talking spiritual things, my friend. Because there's nothing good outside of what Christ done for you at the cross. In that is the whole fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. Everything was wrapped up right there at the cross. And we're fixing to get to that. We're right here in Ephesians. Listen to this. He said, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named. Ain't another name like the name of Jesus. This Jesus, amen. Not out, not all the Jesuses. This Jesus. This Jesus that went to Calvary. This Jesus that's sitting at the right hand of God. This Jesus. It says, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Oh my goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Not only in this world, but also the one to come. Is his name above every name. Oh hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh that ought to make you shout right there. Amen. Verse 22. And has put all things under his feet. Oh praise God. I said and has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head of over all things to the church. Hallelujah. You want to know how the church ought to operate, my friend? The Bible tells us that all things are given to the church through Jesus Christ and what He did at the cross. Amen. Amen. Put Him first. Amen. Put Christ first and what He did at the cross first. And then you'll begin to see the Spirit of God go to work in your congregation. And start transforming some of them worldly folks into some godly folks. Amen. That's what God wants. That's what God desires. 
that they no longer keep being tossed from this one to that one, but they'll be grounded, hallelujah, in this present truth. Amen. That's what God desires. That's what He wants. Some people to grow up in the faith, to be solidified, amen, to be established, hallelujah, to be grounded, praise God. But they're not going to be grounded and they're not going to be established if you can't stay the course with preaching exclusively Christ and Him crucified as Paul did. Your, your opinion does not help anybody. My opinion does not help anyone. But I can tell you what the Word of God says where we can receive help in time of need. No matter what you're going through, you can come to Calvary tonight. No matter if you've been drunk four days. No matter if you've been strung out on crack cocaine and meth for a week. And, 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 and you're drawn up about the size of a noodle. That doesn't matter right now. What matters tonight no matter if you've been in a wishy-washy church that's been tossed to and fro, that's been influenced by false teaching and doctrine, it doesn't matter. It, it, the sin is sin. But you can come out of from under all that tonight and be established in this present truth. Amen. I'll never forget today. Hallelujah. When my burdens were rolled away. Hallelujah. I said, I'll never forget the day that my burdens were rolled away. Amen. When I went to Calvary, when I heard the preaching of Christ and Him crucified, and faith began to resonate in my heart. Hallelujah. And from then until now, I've done nothing but kept that faith, and I've been determined from that day by the grace of God to continue on in that faith, and not be moved away. I've had many who have tried to do it. I've had many who has called me. Whatever they call me, it doesn't matter. They call Paul a lot of things. Paul never let that move him. Paul stayed the course. Amen? And that's what grace will do. Grace will cause you to keep walking and to keep going forward in this present truth, amen? Not withdrawing. If you're withdrawing, it's because you're trying to hang on to something that you don't need, amen? The Bible says, praise God, which is His body, in verse 23, the fullness of Him that fills all and all, amen? It fills all and all. Hallelujah. I want to go back up to verse 21. Amen. And I just want to touch on some things right quick. The Bible says that God put Christ far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Why did God do this with Jesus? Because Jesus fulfilled the law in His flesh. Amen. Taking it away and nailing it to the cross. Amen. God was satisfied with what Christ done at the cross. Amen. He was satisfied that Christ fulfilled the law fully. Amen. And now he is set down at the right hand of God. This is what the Bible tells us in verse 20 of Ephesians 1 and 20. That's what it tells us. That God has set him down at his right hand in heavenly places. Amen. And I want you to know tonight that if you are in Christ do you know where God sees you? You need to know this. God don't see you as a potential little sinner. God doesn't see you as a potential to draw back. That's what man does, amen? God sees you as already in heaven, amen? If you keep the faith, 
if you keep the faith. What faith? The faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. That faith. That's the only faith that puts you in Jesus Christ. That's the only faith that will keep you in Jesus Christ. No other faith can do it. I don't care how many churches you sign their uh, to creed or, or, or uh, domas or whatever they uh, their, their paphrases or whatever they got you to sign. Listen, that doesn't matter. That don't move God. You know what moved God? Faith. In Christ and what Christ afforded to you through his death. That, my friend, moves God. How does it move God? Because God recognizes that you were a sinner and now you have turned and embraced the one who fulfilled all the counsel of God, amen, through his death. The Bible says that he placed him above every principality and power might and dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in the world, but also that in the world that is to come. And because Christ was crucified and set down at the right hand of God, you, my friend, got some things that you have access to. Amen? And you need to know what you got access to. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that in John 6 and 33, 16, 33, the Bible says, These things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. Amen. You have peace in Jesus Christ. Quit whining and crying on two Facebook. Listen, you, you got peace in Jesus Christ. Amen. You've been established in one of the greatest events or persons known to man. You have been placed in him through faith in what he's done for you at the cross. That means you have access to everything that God has provided through his son Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus had access to, oh glory to God, you got access to my friend. If you would just believe the Bible says, For I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations. There will be some times, but listen through all that. But be of good cheer. God said this, be of good cheer. Jesus said this, Jesus, God, they're both the same. Amen. When I say the same, I'm talking, they are two different. They are God and Jesus but they both were in the same agreement. They were separate entities, but they were in the same agreement. I don't want you to think I'm preaching oneness or anything like that. Amen. Anyway, let me get on with this. Amen. It says, because greater... No, I, I skipped it. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Sir, ma'am, whatever... Whatever you're going through, Jesus said, be of good cheer. The Jesus that went to the cross and gave his life for you, he said, be of good cheer. Why? Because he has overcome the world. Hallelujah. He's overcome the world. What does that mean to me? If you're in Jesus Christ, guess what? That means you can overcome the world. Amen. Not that you can. It is You've already done it because He's already done it. You just need to believe it. Amen. You just need to put your faith in the proper boundaries where God can show you your victory. Amen. And quit trying to worry about having the potential to go back to sin. We don't preach a potential of sinning. We preach the a potential of being godly in Jesus Christ. Because that's what the Bible preaches. Amen. The Bible don't preach a potential. Uh, uh, well, you have a potential to sin. No, my goodness, man. It's time that the church get it right. And it's time that we turn from those that will not preach this truth exclusively. And be honest with the people. Christ died to free me from sin. I'm not 
preaching sinless perfection, but I am preaching victory over sin that we may walk in this life godly, soberly, visionly, in peace, in love, and in understanding, and meekness, and all these gifts that Christ died to give us. He didn't die to give us sin. He died to deliver us from sin. Amen. He's not the minister of sin. Amen. He's a minister of righteousness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. But he says, I have overcome the world. So no, no matter what you're going through, sir, ma'am, you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ. If you put your faith where God can show you the victory, amen. If you, will, if you will put your faith in what Christ did for you at the cross and keep it there and don't be moved by anything that's going on around you, oh my goodness, grace will come. An abundant of grace will come. I cannot, listen, I can't get away from this grace. They, the world don't make a prescription drug, hallelujah, that'll give you what grace will give you. The world can't make it. Man can't make it. Hallelujah. But God sent His only begotten Son into the world that His Son may die and grant you grace. Hallelujah. Grant you grace that you can walk upright. Hallelujah. That you can begin to walk boldly in this world before all humanity and show them Christ, amen. That's what it's all about. To show them Christ, amen. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, verse 4 and 5. 1 John 4, 4 and 5. Ye are of God, amen. If you're in Christ, John says you are of God. Little, He says little children... And you have overcome them. Because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Greater is Christ in you than whatever is going on around you. Greater is Christ. Hallelujah. Greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. Satan don't have a foothold on you, my friend, anymore. If you're in Christ, He's defeated. Hallelujah. I said, if, he, if you're in Christ, He is defeated. I, oh, hallelujah. And you need to get a hold of that tonight. You need to be confident in that tonight. You don't need to waver in that no matter what's going on around you. No matter what you see going to the, on to the left and to the right. You need to stand firm, hallelujah, in this gospel of Christ and Him crucified and know that it is the power of God that will deliver you over to the, over to the death of Jesus that Christ might be manifested in your moral body. Hallelujah. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Ye are not of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. They are of the world. The Bible says they, the world always wants to give a worldly method to try to, to try to overcome those things that are in your life. That's what the world does. The world always tries to deliver you to something that would try to uh, bring comfort, to bring peace. But I got news for you, hallelujah. The world ain't got it, hallelujah. The world ain't got it, they ain't never had it, amen. There ain't but one place to get it, and it's at Calvary. It's at Calvary. What Jesus done for you at the cross, my friend, is the place you can receive the grace of God that flows abundantly, hallelujah. That will cause everything within you to withdraw from every evil way, every false thing, and begin to walk upright. Hallelujah. And joyful about it. Amen. When you do it. Hallelujah. Because you know it's not you. Paul said it's not I. But it's Christ. Amen. But it's Christ in me. No longer I. But it is Christ in me. Hallelujah. 
He says, For they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. And the world heareth them. The world always gives its ear to the world. That's what the world does. But we're not of the world. That's what the Bible tells us. We're not of this world. Amen. I'm going to prove that to you. I want you to go to John 17. Amen. Go to the book of John 17. Chapter 17, verse 14. Let's look at it. Let's read it. Let's see what it says. Amen. It says, and let's go to 13. Let's go to John 17, 13. Amen. It says, And now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. We preach to the world. We tell the world about this glorious cross, what Christ did for us, that all of joy, peace, understanding, mercy, meekness, gentle, all these things could come into their life. Deliverance. We preach these things because we preach Christ crucified and we give the people an opportunity. Jesus did this. Listen to what He says. He says, I have given them My Word and the world has hated them because... Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus said that we're not of the world because He's not of the world. That means this is a a spiritual awareness that needs to be made in the heart of the believer. You're not of this world anymore. Amen. You have been transferred out of Adam and you've been placed into Jesus Christ. Therefore, you're not of this world anymore. It's time to cut rope with this world. It's time to cut rope with religion. It's time to cut rope with everything that is going against the Word of God in truth. It's time to cut it loose. Take an axe to the root of the problem. Sin. That's what happens. Sin. We got to cut loose of all these things, but it can only be done by the power of God. And we know what the power of God is. Amen. We know that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. That's what the Bible tells us. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. This is why, my friend, it is so important that you get in a cross-preaching, Bible-believing church while there is still time. Amen. Because the de- Listen to me, my friends. The door is closing. This thing is about to wrap up. You ain't got time to be uh, peeking over here and peeking over there. It's time to come out from all the denominationalism and all man advised religion and begin to come to the truth that God may go to work into your heart and into your life by simple faith. It's time to take up the cross. It's time to deny self and begin to walk As God ordains you to walk. God has never called you us. God has never called a saint to continue in sin. God has never called a saint to be jealous over another saint. He's called us to be jealous with a godly jealous. Amen. One that desires that what as Paul said, that the eyes of your uh, understanding be enlightened. That's what we desire. That's the kind of jealousy I have over the body of Christ that I desire that you know what is the hope of the gospel and how to operate in the power of God through faith in what Christ has done for you at the cross and begin to start walking as you ought to walk before a dry and dead and a sleep church. Amen. That's what we need. The power of God to operate. And God's not going to operate if you're not in the boundaries of the cross. If you're not in the boundaries of what Christ did for you at the cross. Listen, God's not in it at all, my friend. It's all you. It's all you.
deny yourself, take up the cross and follow Jesus. Quit looking at the circumstances. Quit looking at all the things that are going on and begin to fix your eyes upon Calvary one more time while there's still day. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you tonight, God, the Father. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I'm just asking if there might be one heart out there tonight, Lord, that truly believes this gospel. Lord, that you would touch them tonight. Lord, that you would meet that need, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, whatever they're going through, whatever's going on around them, Lord, whatever's burdening their heart or their soul, Lord, those that need healing, Lord, I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would heal every infirmity, Lord, that you would touch everything, Lord, from their head to their feet, Lord. Give them faith to believe for the days of head, Lord. Give them faith, Lord, that they might turn to you and turn away from everything else, Lord, and begin to walk as you would desire them to walk. Hallelujah. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Believe in you for these things, Lord. Believe in you, Lord, once again, that the Holy Spirit will flood in, Lord, abundantly and begin to touch and sweep all those that would put their trust in the one who was crucified, Lord, that the work of God might be made manifest in their heart and in their life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for another day. And I thank you for all my brothers and sisters and those that preach Christ crucified in the land right now. Lord, I'm asking you to strengthen each and every one of them. Lord, give them ears and souls, Lord, in these last days. No matter where they're at, you know the ones that you've planted. Lord, you've got them brought out all over the, uh, a few in this nation. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord. Touch the meetings coming up in October, Lord. Touch every congregation that is determined not to know anything but Christ and Him crucified tonight, Lord. I'm asking these things, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. Show them once again that you are the God of yes and amen. That you are the one who sent your Son to deliver us from whatever might plague us, Lord. You are faithful. Hallelujah. But your faithfulness was poured out in your Son. And let us come to that, Lord. And let us, Lord, just cry out to you, Lord. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Now, Lord, thank you. Amen. And I want to, listen, I, before I let you go, I just want to encourage you, amen, to go to our uh, Crossway Ministries evangelist page on YouTube. You just punch it in the search bar, uh, Crossway Ministries Evangelist page. You can catch every broadcast that we do at Crossway Ministry. Pastor Wayne Voss and Sister Debbie, uh, they're, uh, th what a blessing they are to the body there. I thank God for them. Uh, the Sunday service, the Tuesday morning trunk, the Wednesday contending for the faith, and, and my Good Fight broadcast, and Brother Jonathan's uh partaking of Christ broadcast. Everything's there. You can catch it. But most of all, you know what we want more than anything? We want to see you at church on Sunday. Amen. Lifting your hands, giving God praise for what He done through Jesus Christ and the cross that we might have everything that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. That's what we desire. That you be in Jesus Christ, but we also desire that you be in church. Amen. It's not wrong. It's not a sin to come to church. Amen. It's a good thing, amen. So I just want to, it, it, listen, if you want to give to this ministry, you can give to this ministry. You can make a uh, check out to Crossway Ministries. You can send it to P.O. Box 80, I'm sorry, to P.O. Box 9097, Greenwood, Mississippi. And you can just uh, send that to Pastor uh, Wayne and Debbie Voss, P.O. Box 9097 Greenwood, Mississippi, 38930. 38930 is the zip code. 
uh, you just make the check out to Crossway Ministries. You can either give that away or you can go to our uh, website, www.crosswayministries.org. You can hit the donate button. It'll walk you down. It'll walk you through the instructions of how to give. And listen, we just desire that each and every one of you uh, find a good cross preaching. Bible believing church while there's still time my friends they're not going to be here much longer and we desire to be for you to be there with us we have services on Wednesday night and Sunday morning Sunday morning at 10 o'clock amen Wednesday night at 6 30 p.m. if you're driving if you're coming from the levee in Mississippi going toward Greenwood you pass right by uh, Itabina, you'll see the church right there on the right hand side, Crossway Ministries. You can, it's not hard to find. If you're coming from Greenwood, as soon as you pass Pepsi and Viking and American Catch right there, or maybe American Harvest, the Catfish Place, I know it's going to be right there to the left. Amen. It's a great blessing what God's doing right there in that small congregation. Amen. The power of God. Uh, it is being preached there and being presented and people are being changed. People are being grow, growing in grace and knowledge. And uh, I just love you tonight. I hope I said something that would challenge you tonight, that would cause you to take another look at, at the cross and not give up. Amen. Love you, each and every one of you. God bless.